Okay, so this is a, um, also I, I didn't quite get to it yesterday and I don't feel like it's worth spending a bunch of time on in the lecture today. So I'm just gonna uh, put this here for, for folks who are, interest in, who are interested. So the, the question is, um, how can we distribute or parallelize uh, termination? So um, I'm, I'm thinking about you know, uh, imperative programs and for imperative programs, this is the paper that um, is sort of the blueprint for, for tools that do that today. It actually borrows its proof principle from the size change principle paper from um, Neil Jones et al. Um, and so the idea is, is as follows. So um, uh, you, it, it finds a bunch, a, a, a series of termination argument parts. And, and this allows us to, I won't, I won't go into detail here, but it allows us to incrementally find this termination argument via effectively counterexample guided abstract refinement. So we can start off with the empty relation and then find more pieces of the relation and, and add them in. And we and we combine them with union. And then we take the non-reflexive transitive closure of the transition relation of the program. And then if this subset inclusion holds, then then the, the program terminates. And uh, in Terminator, what we did is we, you know, on a sequential microprocessor, we were finding all of these little termination arguments that we would put together, but we had to kind of do one at a time. Um, but now, but now we're kind of in this other situation, right? So could we actually distribute the search of these termination argument parts across uh, uh, data centers or across cores? And, and so the, the attack I'm going for this, and I think there's a lot more we could do, but um, is just to use the control flow graph structure of the, um, the program to break it up. So it turns out you can actually prove independent lemmas or independent, you can find independent termination arguments for each while loop. And um, this, this actually, this is detailed in the Terminator paper, but, but, I'll, but I'll, I'll explain it here. So, um, so the first thing we can do is we can ask, hey, can location two be visited infinitely often? And we actually don't care about the inner loop. In fact, we would like it if the inner loop didn't terminate because that would mean that you don't visit location two infinitely often, if you see what I mean. So, um, uh, so what, what we need to do here is to summarize the terminating behavior of the internal loop. Now in the regular terminator formulation, this would happen very, very naturally. Um, uh, in, these, in this distributed formulation, we would need to sort of hoist some code out and do, do some work we were gonna do eventually, but in a slightly different place, but, but I'll, I, I digress. But the, 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 the thing is, is that Terminator was actually based on uh, SLAM, which was based on predicate abstraction. And I talked about that um, yesterday. So believe me um, that this is the predicate abstraction. Pre the, the predicate abstraction would give you essentially this um, abstraction. So I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna ask you to to believe me that that's true. Um, if you chose the right predicates, this is what you would get. And and I'm expressing this in terms of the source program, but but that that could be done in the abstraction too. And so then it's really easy to see the termination argument, right? This is the um, the the functions from before. So so the the f of x y is y minus x. So basically, it's saying that um, oh, y minus x is the measure that's going down and, and is and is eventually bound. So then the next thing we'd want to do is prove the inner loop, right? So now we're saying, hey, can we locate visit location five infinitely often? And then and then we're making the assumption that the outer loop doesn't repeat infinitely often. Um, and so again, we can use predicate abstraction to abstract this away. And again, I'm going to ask you to believe me that if we did predicate abstraction over the right predicates, this is what we would get when, once we did that abstraction. Um, and so again, it's pretty easy to see the termination argument in this case. It's just Z is going down and is bound. Uh, and so thus we found now two termination arguments. Um, and and that that those two together actually imply termination of the, of the overall program. So we and we could do those completely independently. So that that shows you that basically if we have a, a program with n loops, we can 
distribute or parallelize by in at least. There's more you could do, but the, but, it, but at least by in, it's pretty easy. And there's no crosstalk really needed between these two searches. Um, and so what what um, it's it's funny because the the you know the um, this 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 uh, structure of scientific revolutions is saying that we we ask new questions of old data, and that's really what I'm going to do in this case. I'm going to actually look at the logs from the original experimental results on the Terminator paper and derive some new um, thoughts or some new information from that old data. So this is the um, table from the paper. Um, so how you read this is, is that if we didn't find a bug, no true bugs found means we found a proof. Um, and um, and if and if we and if there's a, a bug found, then we then the, the proofs are trailed. And this is the runtime of the sequential termination prover on my laptop 2006. It was, a, I think, a, a IBM ThinkPad or Lenovo ThinkPad or something like that. Um, and then this is this is uh, this is from the original paper, so we're calling it a couple point size. But what this really means is the number of loops that are on the program. So you know, there's 29 while loops or 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 go to statements or or you know, you know recursive function calls, etc. Um, and so this is the horizontal runtime that we could achieve. So if we were to distribute, so so for example, on this case, um, there's 26 loops. So if we broke this uh, up into 26 uh, independent checks, it would take 23 seconds as opposed to 257 seconds. So this is the runtime for proof search in data centers, but that is if the data center were made with 2006 Lenovo laptops. And so how I'm computing that is for cases where we were termination holds, I'm, I'm taking the max time for, for each lemma. And I and I had that in the logs. So for T1, T2 to TI or to TN or whatever, um, whichever one took the longest, that's what I'm recording. So the longest of the 65 cases here, the longest one um, took 3,000 seconds as opposed to this much larger size. Um, and um, in the case where uh, we find a bug, then I'm taking the time for the for the loop where the bug existed. Um, and so, so for these larger cases, we're getting two orders of magnitude speed up, um, and and for the simpler cases, we're getting one one to two orders of magnitude uh, speed up. Now, keep in mind that Terminator itself was built on SLAM, and uh, yesterday we talked about how to scale SLAM. So we could also, I think, we could get some additional benefit there. So here, for example, that looks pretty juicy, right? This one. So for these larger cases, the 3,000, the 4,000 second cases, I think we could get a lot of, we could squish that down quite a bit. And then the other thing is, is that the underlying uh, SMT solver um, can be scaled for 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 um, additional. And, and the reason that that's really interesting is because how I, I didn't go into detail, but how we're finding the rank ranking functions, it's it's, it's a rank function synthesis engine which actually uses SMT itself. And so here's a pointer to a paper that uh, goes into detail about, about how that works. So I think overall, if you take this number and then you think about what you could do with SLAM uh, by distributing and what you could do with um, uh, distributing uh, SMT, there's probably another two to three orders of magnitude here too. So maybe we could squish that down to like, you know, 10 seconds or so. I don't know. Um, so, uh, you know, new science questions, new algorithms, new engineering possibilities. Thanks.